Hello, everyone. My name is Adrian, and um, I'm the owner of Handknit Gorgeous Dolls. I'm glad that you can be here with me today, and I'm so excited to be here with Fiber Love Affair again. <laughs> um, I also would like to introduce you to Sammy. She is my moderator. She's going to be helping me with the chat box. So feel free to ask questions, post them in the chat box. Sammy will make sure that I answer all your questions. Okay. I would like to start off with um, how I began. I've been knitting for almost 20 years and um, I've knitted everything, sweaters, scarves, uh, blankets, toys, and I love toys the most. I love knitting dolls and toys. I just can't stop myself. But one day, a few years ago, about 2015 or 16, I think it was, my daughter came to me and asked me if I would knit her a doll. Well, my daughter is a grown sassy lady. So I thought I've got to find a pattern for this grown sassy lady. And um, I did. And I'd like to share that with you now. I started knitting this doll. I found the pattern and um, I had to modify the pattern somewhat, but here she is. Her name is Nyla. This is a doll that I knitted for my daughter. And I was captivated when I knitted her. Look at her eyes. I, I can't even imagine how I did those eyes because I really didn't know much about what I was doing. I just knew I wanted to produce this beautiful little sassy doll. And look at her hands, her fingers. I've since uh, modified that as well. But that's how I started out. And I thought she was the cat's meow. I told my husband, you know, when I go back in the room to work, she's going to stand up and start walking towards me. That is exactly how I saw her. She was coming alive for me. She was talking to me, listening to me. It was great. It was just great. So um, I decided, can I do that again? Can I reproduce another doll like that? And I tried. And um, a couple of years went by because I tried everything. I tried cotton. I don't like working with cotton for my dolls that much, maybe for their clothes, but not for their bodies. But I went on and I did recreate some more dolls. And then I decided to open an Etsy shop. And these little ladies were my first dolls that I made. And I, they, they were just, they just warm my heart, love them. And here's another little lady. And then I went on to make dolls that sat in chairs, that sat up. So now I would like to um, show you how I actually created, create the dolls. I knit their heads. Well, now I knit their heads and their torsos as one piece. I just keep working up. And um, I knit the legs and the feet, the arms and fingers. As you can see, they're much better now, the fingers. They're all one piece, not two as before when I first started. I would knit the arm and then the hand and um, put them together. I don't do that anymore. I make them all one piece. And um, I knit the clothing separate now too. I'm starting to do that. They're actually getting their clothing, their pants or skirts or dresses separate. Once I've got all the pieces knitted, I stuffed them um, and seamed them. I used the mattress stitch to seam. I love the mattress stitch. And I seamed them with um, and stuffed them with polyester fiber fill. I make my I roving wool and I make balls out of them for their breasts. And uh, I use pipe cleaners. However, I don't use regular pipe cleaners that you buy in the craft shop. I actually go to the um, the cigar stores, the cigarette shops, and I buy pipe, real pipe cleaners that um, men who smoke pipes buy to clean their pipes. I find they're sturdier and they actually come in different weights. One is a softer weight and the other is a, a hard, stiff cleaner. Once I've got all the pieces um, sewn, I attach them. I attach it her torso to her legs and her arms. And um, I'd start looking at her. That's when she starts coming alive for me, when I see her put together. 
she starts talking to me, telling me what color eyes she wants, <laughs> what type of jewelry she likes. So I knit the eyelashes, I knit her eyes, I apply her mouth and her teeth. Fingernail and toenail color is made out of yarn. Then I apply her jewelry, which I make from little, I buy jewelry and I break them up into small pieces because my dolls are so small. The eyes I found are the most challenging. It takes me the longest time to get the eyes the way I want them. Normally I'll get one eye and I'll sit there and make the other night eye immediately and it's totally different and I have to redo it again. So uh, it's, it's a task, but um, once I get it, once I'm satisfied with the eyes, the doll is done, really. The rest is just plain fun. Her hair, I put her hair in one strand at a time. Um, that's the fun part. And if I want it straight, I will iron the yarn and it straightens it out and I apply it there. If I want curly yarn, I wrap it on a skewer. I put it in the oven for about 20 minutes. I dampen the dampen it first and put it on, in this, on the skewer on a pan and put it in the oven for about 20 minutes. And when it comes out of the skewer, off the skewer from the oven, it's curly. It's just nice and curly. It's fun. This is her face. And once they come alive like this, they talk to me. They tell me what type of jewelry they want. Unless it's a custom order and then the customers gets what they want because the customer is always right. And in this case, it was a custom order. It was actually my very first custom order. And they wanted um, diamondite type jewelry on her. So I gave her a diamond necklace, earrings, bracelet, ring. They loved it. And she also is wearing a watch. All of my dolls have watches on their wrists, if you so choose. And some people say they're Fitbit, some, ones, some people say they're Apple watches, whichever. That's what they wear. Now I would like to show you a few of my custom orders because they're not here. They're in their forever home now. I really would like to share them with you. Here is a lady pastor. She's holding a Bible in her lap. She was a custom order. I, when I, the lady reached out to me, she told me what color her pastor loves to wear, the color dress, the color jacket. She sent me a picture of her pastor, beautiful dress she had on, similar to this actually. And um, she asked, she did like jewelry and she also wears eyeglasses. And she asked if I could put eyeglasses on her. So I was enthralled with that. I'm like, yes, I've tried that in the past. I will try it again. So I got out my wire and I made her some eyeglasses. And I think the next one you can see a little closer there is her eyeglasses. I actually um, made the glasses out of wire and I took some yarn and wrapped it around the top of the glasses to give it a, a style, a color. And they loved it, of course. They, they were just blown away. I put a ring on her finger, her nail polish. They told me what color they wanted her nails, her toenails and her nails, fingernails to be. She has on a bracelet and another ring on the other finger as well. And of course, there's her watch. And this also was a custom order. This little lady, is a, was, is a gift for a lawyer, a lady lawyer. Um, a dear friend of the lawyers at, got in touch with me and asked if I could make a little lady doll that's actually for a business card holder. So I told her, yes, that would be fine. Please send me a picture of the lawyer. And um, I asked her what her color, her favorite color was. And she said, yellow. She loves yellow and she loves wearing dresses. And, um, she likes jewelry. So here she is. The little book in her hand. I didn't I don't make books, but I do know how to get hold of some. And that is actually um, Black's Law Dictionary in her hand. It's a, it's a miniature Black Law's, this, dic, Law's Dictionary in her hand.
And um, she also had, I noticed she had a little gap between her teeth in her pictures. So I tried to emulate that with a little gap there, as you can see in the doll. And she's in her forever home now and the lawyer loves her, just loves her. She's wearing two bracelets, rings on both uh, hands. If you can see on one hand, she has a ring and on the other, she also has rings. And then she's wearing her matching necklace and earrings. Those are fun to make, to put those together. I never thought I would like making jewelry, but I do little tiny pieces of jewelry. It's just so much fun. This is little Miss Vera and she's knitting. She's got some a lace knitting going on in her hands. And she's also got knitting needles there. My husband actually makes the chairs and the knitting needles for me. So I'm very pleased with that. That's a package deal right there. If you get a doll sitting, she's going to be sitting in her custom made chair as well. And this is a little Miss Nursing school student. My niece started nursing school and I was so excited because I'm a retired RN. So I was so proud to know that she was going to nursing school. So I knitted her this little doll and I knitted a thesoscope around her neck and she is holding a book and it's Tabor's Medical Dictionary in her hand. And it's actually got written pages in there, a few written pages. So those are so fun. And she was flabbergasted, she said. She was just blown away when she received her in the mail. And this is Miss Leticia. She was a custom order also. Actually a dear friend of mine for many, 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 many years. We go way, way back to like elementary school. Um, her cousin called me and he said, could you make a doll for Linda? It's her birthday and I would love to get her one of your dolls. And this is Linda. She calls her Miss Leticia. So uh, Linda is the sassy lady also. And um, she used to own a hat company. So I definitely had to put a hat like Linda would wear on her doll's head. And she also has some um, dreadlocks. So I made sure her doll had dreadlocks as well. She wears large earrings. So I made sure she had those large gold hoops on. And you can see her sunglasses. This was another challenge. I can make glasses because there's no actual lens in the glass. But with sunglasses, I had to put something in there so that you could see they were actually sunglasses. So that was a challenge. That was a fun project. And um, I wrapped yarn around the top of the uh, glasses as well. She's got a glass of wine in her hand because Linda loves wine. So there she is holding her glass of wine with her Fitbit or Apple Watch, I don't know what to call it, on her wrist. She also has jewelry on, just a ring. I don't think Linda goes for more than a ring. She doesn't wear bracelets too often. And this is when I started actually knitting the clothes separate. The blouse is separate and of course the sweater is separate and her pants, which I used to knit as one piece when I would knit the legs, is now separate. The pants are really nice. I, I bought a fingering weight wool for the pants. Normally my dolls are made with um, DK weight. And, um, but for the clothing, I try to get a little um, softer look and feel. So I use a fingering weight yarn. And this is Aunt Betty. This was a birthday present for an 80 year old lady. And I was told her name is Aunt Betty. So I made sure to get a picture of her as well. She loved it. It was her birthday present. Um, I sat a purse in her lap and I put a silver, a silver doll. I put a dollar coin inside of her purse to give it not just weight, but every lady needs to have money in their purse. So I made sure that Aunt Betty had some money in her purse as well. And she has shoes on. Normally my dolls don't have shoes, but I, they requested shoes. And so I learned, I figured out how to knit shoes with a little heel on it. And there she is. And Aunt Betty doesn't wear a lot of jewelry, but she likes her hoops as well. So I made sure I put 
some silver hoops on her and a silver necklace. And here is Sharice. Well, Sharice, this little fatty girl, she reminds me, she reminded me of my niece who passed away. And um, so I named her after my niece Sharice. And she's no longer in my shop that she sold right away. <laughs> but she's a sassy lady too, look at that. And this gorgeous doll is Teresa. I had a friend named Terry, or her real name was actually Teresa. And she had long, beautiful, silky black hair. And I knitted this little lady. And as I was knitting her, I was thinking of Terry and I'm like, my goodness, she reminds me of my friend. I'm actually just bringing out my friend in this doll. And my friend Lenore saw her and said, oh my God, she looks just like my sister, Teresa. And I said, yes, you're right, she does. So she, she said, I have to have her, Adrian. I have to buy her because she looks, she reminds me so much of Terry. Yes. So she's in her forever home as well. And she's holding the book in her hand as well. <laughs> and this is Jayla. And Jayla is holding knitting needles and she's knitting as well. And this is little Miss Susan, who was also a custom order. And she's got her knitting in her hand. She's from one of the members of my knitting guild ordered her. So that was fun. <laughs> and she's sitting in her little wooden, wooden chair as well. And this is Ava, sassy Ava. And she's in her forever, forever home too. But um, the lady who wanted her wanted a glass of wine in her hand. So I made sure Ava was holding a glass of wine in her hand when I shipped her off. And now I have an, another little story that I'd like to tell you about. I received um, a message from a lady stating that she admired my creativity and she understands that I need gorgeous feminine dolls, but her request was out of the ordinary. She was asking if I could recreate a knitted toy for her son. She has had the, the actual original knitted toy for over 30 years. She had it when she was a baby and she loved it. And his name is Flip Flop. And she asked if I could please recreate Flip Flop. Well, Flip Flop, come to find out, was over two feet tall. He was about 28 inches. And at first I said, oh, no, I really don't think so. That's not what I do. I would have to recreate the pattern, a knitted pattern, or a gauge swatch, the right size needles, right size yarn. But I told her, but if I have an epiphany about this, I'll let you know. Her letter was so heartwarming and touching that I did decide to take it on. I love a challenge, by the way. So I took on flip flop. And this is the diagram that she sent me of flip flop. It was a watercolor that she did. Beautiful watercolor with all the renderings. It was actually the same size as the doll she wanted. So, and up at the top, as you can see, she even had her color palette. So I knew what colors to order for her. And um, because he was so tall, I did, I decided to try and knit him and I did it, I did it. Do you wanna see him? <laughs> oh my goodness. She gave me all the dimensions, how wide and how tall, it was perfect. She had them all written down. So here, over here to the left, I started knitting. I started knitting him bottom up. I started with his foot. And then I would size it up with the diagram so that I could see what I was doing to make sure I captured, captured him. And in this photo over here, you can see I'm up, I've put the two legs together and I'm up to the waist. But this was such a fun project and I was really busy. It was around Christmas time. I told her, please just give me time. And she said, take all the time you need, just take all the time you need. And I'm like, thank you, thank you. But I always posted pictures as I went along. 
so that she could stay up to par with me as well. And to the right, here he is without his arms. I mean, I'm sorry, to the left. He does not have his arms and his face on yet. I'm working on that. And to the right, he is completed. There he is. And here he is in his happy home. There's flip flop. And she actually sends me updates occasionally. She keeps in touch and lets me know <laughs> how they're doing. But she was just flabbergasted. She loved him and I did too. I was so glad I took that challenge on. And I'm so glad I wrote that pattern and figured it all out and made it just the way she wanted to her size. I'm glad she had that um, watercolor rendering for me as well. That really helped that scale drawing that she sent me. I think she must be an artist. This, who does that? I'm not an artist. I wish I was. <laughs> as far as drawing goes, I can't draw at all. I do try. But that's Flip Flop, and I fell in love with Flip Flop. There he is in all his glory with his new baby brother by his side. And he's happy. She said he really loves Flip Flop as well. Now, ladies and gents, I would like to introduce you to some of my mermaids that I've made. Here is my rainbow mermaid. She's knitted in the colors of the rainbow. I really enjoyed knitting her. And she has a little seashell around her neck. My mermaids are not for very small children because of the seashell around their necks. Now, if you prefer to give it to a very small child, you certainly can, but I would say, let's remove the seashell. I would hate for a child to swallow that seashell. And also, um, I sent one to my great granddaughter when she was five and she wanted to put her mermaid in the bathtub with her because after all she told her father, mermaids live in the water. So I don't recommend them for very young children, but for us ladies who love mermaids, they can be a, they're a decorative force in your home. They look beautiful in your bathroom or in your living room. They're just gorgeous. And here's another mermaid. That's in a for half a home as well. And this is Kai. My grandson has Kai. He loves Kai. And this is Maya. Beautiful mermaid. I have another picture of her here. You can see her completely. These are fun projects. I love knitting mermaids. And this is a custom order that I received. I was very happy to create. Um, I would like to share with you my six skin tones. I have six skin tones for people to choose from so that you can get the doll or the mermaid in the skin tone that you prefer. And if you do decide that you would like to purchase something, oops, give me a moment here. <laughs> oh, my mouse. Excuse me, let me give me a second. There. Oops. <laughs> okay, here we are. You'll also receive um, complimentary gifts. This is a uh, sewing pin, beautiful sewing pins. If you have a um, pin cushion, these pins are gorgeous. They would look lovely. They will brighten up your pin cushion. They're by Leslie Stortz. She makes gorgeous sewing pins. She actually quilts. She may, and she makes pin cushions. And you will also receive a project bag because every crafter needs a project bag. We never have enough 
project bags. And this is by Galeana Creations. And so you'll get the sewing pins as well as the project bag. And this is how you can reach me. Oh, and up there, that's Zora. Zora is holding a glass of wine as well because every lady needs a glass of wine in the evening, don't we? <laughs> and she's in her forever home too. I enjoyed Zora. <laughs> but this is how you can reach me, um, handedgorgeousdolls.com. And my uh, email, my uh, website is www.handedgorgeousdolls.com. My mail, my email address is handedgorgeousdolls at gmail.com. I'm on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. So um, that's the end of this slide. And now I would like to show you what I've been working on. Like you to meet Fiona. Fiona. She's got red hair, green outfit on, sitting in her chair. She's holding a knitting basket in her hand on her lap. She's got a bracelet on. She's got rings on her finger and a necklace. Just beautiful. And this is Fiona. And meet Corsa. She's holding a glass of wine in her hand. Got on a beautiful dress each. She's been out for, she's been out partying, I think. This dress, beautiful blue dress. And she's wearing her jewelry as well. Got on her watch, ring on her fingers, bracelet, and matching necklace. And now I would like you to meet the Wicked Witch. She's got her broom because tomorrow is Halloween. Here's her, oh, here's her stand. <laughs> Come sit on your bench. This is the Ephaba. I don't know if anyone's read um, Wicked or um, seen the musical play Wicked, but she is my interpretation of Ephaba. I, I, that book is not for children. The play, I wouldn't take children to see it. I would recommend this book is um, the backstory of the Wizard of Oz and it's not for children. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, this is my version of Ephaba. She's green like her. She's carrying her broom. Um, this is from a pattern by Alan Dark, one of my favorite, favorite toy designers. I just took liberties with his pattern. <laughs> I have a habit of doing that. And Ephaba has a cat. There he is. He's wearing his hat as well, Halloween.
And Alan Dart is out of the United Kingdom, but his patterns are all online. And she also has a, a cauldron. I actually love knitting this. And then I tried to make it look like there's steam coming out there. There, what do you think? <laughs> and she has her bloomers on. When she, after all, when she flies on her broom, she's gotta have her bloomers on. So. But this is definitely fun. This was a fun knitting project, I'll tell you. Here's clear. Clear. And she's reading the big book of knitting. And she too has her jewelry on and her dress I knitted. This is a, a, dre a Barbie dress actually that I saw with the diamonds coming down the front there, the diamond stitching. That was fun to knit. My dolls are actually a little bit bigger than Barbie. So I had to uh, maneuver that pattern as well <laughs> to make it fit, get to come out the right size. But she sat on her blue nail polish and faux nail polish to match her dress and her ring on her finger. All, I put little diamond rings on the finger. I don't know if you can really see them. Can't really see them, but. That's what they are, and beautiful bracelets. And next is Gabrielle. And she's holding a glass of wine and wearing her red dress. I actually knitted this red dress for another doll, and when I put it on her, I did not like how it looked, so I changed it. And, Ask Gabrielle and she would try it on for me. And it looked fabulous on her, doesn't it? Just fabulous. And she too has her watch on and her jewelry and her painted nails. These little dolls are wonderful conversation pieces. We'll get a kick out of that. Ah, and next I have to introduce you to Philly. I am fascinated by horses. I am in awe of horses, actually. I was on a horse once, frightened. I can't tell you how frightened I was. The horse started galloping away with me on him. I had never been on a horse before. I wanted to grab him around the neck, but I knew I couldn't. So I held on to the reins and he was so tall. I was so afraid I was going to fall off and I didn't know how, how to stop, to make him stop. He just, I've, I've been in awe of these horses ever since and he didn't hurt me. He, he just wanted to run and he enjoyed, I guess, or either he wanted me off of him one or the other, but um, I've not been back on. <laughs> but this is also a pattern by Alan Dart. It's actually, um, like I say, I kind of take his patterns and I modify them somewhat. His, this pattern is actually for, what do you call those dolls? Ah, for, um, a unicorn, a unicorn. It was actually a pattern for a unicorn and a uh, troll, a little troll holding. So I think one day I will knit that unicorn and the troll, but in the meantime, I wanted a horse. So here's my filly by Alan Dart. And next is Zinni Me. -Nee. 
my self-portrait is some say. I was slimmer then, yes, I was slimmer then. <laughs> but this is mini me and I'm this is my business card holder and I'm knitting. I am. <laughs> Yes. Namaste. Namaste. Here she is, and she, my yoga dog. The chairs come with the dogs. If your doll is sitting in a chair or a bench, yes, they they come with it. And this little lady, I also knitted her yoga mat. It's made from plastic canvas and yarn, and it's like a chevron pattern. I started messing around with the uh, plastic canvas. This, this um, us staying home and COVID restrictions has brought out a lot of creative people. I, I, it's been wonderful in that sense. But here she is. And as I say, I have six different skin tones so that you can get the doll that you want and the style that you want. And this, is, of course, is just one of many poses, yoga poses. I've got little tiny earrings in her ear as well. You can't really see them. They're kind of small, but they're in there, the gold earrings. And now for Magnificent. Magnificent, the African elephant. And the reason her name is Magnificent is when I completed knitting her, I looked at her and said, Magnificent. <laughs> and so there was her name. <laughs> This is magnificent. I was just so pleased with her. Actually, um, I would have never thought to knit an elephant, but my um, daughter-in-law, I asked her one day, what would she like me to knit for you? I'd like to knit something for you. And she said, oh, oh Adrian, I love elephants. Well, there it was. I found this beautiful pattern. And this pattern is by Georgina Marvell. Beautiful. A lot of short rows. If you're not interested in short rows, then this is not for you. <laughs> I learned a few new stitches as well because this called for, I forget the name of it, it's, this called for a, a different type of uh, seaming. The ears, more stitch. And I found out something. If you want to stiffen something up, that you'd want in a certain way. I really didn't have to do that with these ears because of the type of yarn that I use. It's uh, actually like a paper yarn, but um, I've knitted other elephants as well. And to get the ears stiff, just use hairspray. Just spray the back of the ears with hairspray and let it dry, it dries quickly and uh, it will stiffen your project just the way you want it but this is magnificent. Look at her eyelashes. I even gave her beautiful little eyelashes because all of my dolls have eyelashes. So she has to have eyelashes too. And elephants do have beautiful eyelashes. Did you ever see them? They're just, they're just gorgeous. <laughs> and next, I'd like to show you my comfort dolls. This is a free pattern. 
These make beautiful stocking stuffers. So if you guys have a lot of stash yarn that you would like to use up and create something just as wonderful and cute as can be, these little dolls are the key. And they are a free pattern by Esther Joy Knits. I call them comfort dolls and I'll tell you why. Um, my knitting gill actually um, works with the police, the fire department, and we knit these little dolls and give them to the fire department so that if they go out to a fire at a home or an apartment where there's a child, they can give them this little doll. They, they're about five inches tall and they can have something to comfort them with. We actually had a lady come and visit us and tell us that one of the firemen gave her that a doll when she was little and she still had the doll. And you can make them any size, any size you want. Just increase your needle size and your yarn size. I think this is worsted weight and maybe a size six or seven. These I knitted with a size four. They, you can actually knit a skirt. They have lace skirts and if you wish, or you can just leave them in the pants, whichever way you wish. They're just great stocking stuffers. You can actually put them on, um, on a box, a, a gift box with a bow. They're beautiful, just beautiful. And as I say, this is a free pattern by Esther Joy Knits. You can knit them flat or in the round. She was knitted flat and she was knitted in the round. So yes, you can knit them any way you wish. They're quick knits, they're fun, kids love them. And now let me show you Cordelia. Cordelia Mermaid. Beautiful, just beautiful. And there she has a seashell around her neck as well. And Cordelia. Oh, well, go with me. So, a dare, a Christmas dare. This is a dare by Lolly and Grace. If you like working with felt, sewing, gluing, cutting, then this is the project for you. This is a beautiful little felt deer that I named Doe, of course. <laughs> Lolly and Grace has beautiful patterns if you like to embroider. I also like to embroider. But when I saw this little lady, I just had to have this. It was supposed to be a Christmas present, but I think I'm keeping her for myself at least for this year. And then maybe next year I'll gift her. What do you think? <laughs> That's no. beautiful, beautiful job. And now I'll introduce you to Missy, another mermaid that I have up here. This is Missy. I love I don't know what it is about this color to be. And she still has a seashell necklace. And as I say, I put the strands 
and one by one in her hair and all of my dolls here, just like they were at the beautician. And now for my Peruvian llama. I actually showed him at the last time I was on um, Barbara Love Affair, but this is by my favorite toy designer, Alan Dart. And um, this was a fun bit. This is fun, fun, fun. Everyone should have a, a llama, Peruvian llama at that. Knitting, um, Knitting him was fun. I love the colors here, this in his poncho. Um, I thought that, you know, creating a poncho like this would be a lot of work, but when they're this small, it's not. It's if you're making a real poncho, then you've got some work on your hands. But something like this was actually a joy to knit. And look at his, uh, I think it's pronounced chula, his hat. Can you see it up there? Or should I bring him down just a little lower? But um, I love this. I'm actually knitting one for my daughter for Christmas. She loves him. She can't have mine. I told her I'll make a lot. And that is by Alan Dart. Love him. <laughs> and now for the big surprise. I have a big surprise for you guys. If you, if you like what you saw, Tell me what you think of this. I've knitted a cherry blossom tree. I love cherry blossom trees and I know Eureka does too because I saw a post months ago after I completed this and I couldn't tell you, it was a surprise. I couldn't tell you about it and I wanted so bad to tell you. But let me explain how I, this happened. I belong to the Knitting Guild, the Riverside Knitting Guild. And every year they have a, a contest. It's called the Two Ball Challenge. And uh, they give you two balls of yarn. And with these two balls of yarn, you take the two balls home and you try to create something out of the box, not, not something you normally would create. And um, February of 2020, just before everything shut down, I was given my bag with my two balls of yarn in it. Everyone who participated, who signed up to participate, received the bag. We did not know what colors were in the bag. They said, don't open it until you get home and don't tell anybody. So I said, okay, went home. I opened my bag and I had wood and petal, these two colors. That's what they were called. And that is by um, Nitpicks. And they were discontinued. So you couldn't buy anymore. And they were uh, 50 grams, the two balls each were 50 grams of yarn. So I told my husband, after I looked in the bag for the third time, peeking at this beautiful yarn fingering weight, um, I told him that uh, I've got to make a cherry blossom tree. This, this, this is what I see with these two colors. So the contest started in February, everything shut down. Our projects were due in, I believe it was October, but of course everything was shut down. So we ended up having more than a year to hold on to our projects or to make it take your time. So when I completed it, I, we had to pack it up in plastic and put it away because we couldn't show it to anyone until after it was presented at the knitting guild. Well, I finally presented, we, we actually had the two ball challenge come in. And we brought all our projects in and of course they were all blown away. And that was this October. So it was like a year later. And you, if you're wondering how I did this, I actually have a little video I'd like to show you. Just a little, let me share the screen with you. I didn't take the pictures properly the way I should have, but anyway, I'll show you what I have. I actually went out into my yard and found some branches from a tree that had fell off. And I brought the wood in the house and there it is, as you can see in the right here. This is the actual wood. And I started, I brought in a bunch of them 
and I tried to find the one that would represent my tree because I didn't want it too tall. I didn't want it too small. I only had two balls, 50 grams each of yarn to use. And so um, I found a piece that would work actually in the second one, as you can see here, it actually had like a root, look, would look like a root. I'm like, oh, this is great. I need the root part, really need that. And then I found branches and I wrapped the yarn around the branch. I didn't dare try to knit or I cord something this thin. Here's, um, and I did a lot of cutting. This is a right here in this picture. You can see I have a, a piece of a branch from the tree, little pieces and I cut them and glued them, nailed them, did whatever I took to get them in. And then I found a pattern for the blossoms, which of course is very, actually was the very first thing I did because there was no way I could create a tree without the blossoms. And didn't I find a pattern for cherry blossoms? I most certainly did. So I started knitting these little cherry blossoms out of the second ball of yarn. And I have over a hundred on the tree. So I'm so glad we had months to prepare because here is part of that. And then I took some embroidery cloth because you can take, uh, you can use anything else, but you can't add more yarn. You could use embroidery thread. You can use uh, um, pieces of jewelry to decorate your item, whatever you want to use, you can use, but you could not use any more yarn than the two balls that you were given. So this was perfect because I actually continued making these little cherry blossoms until I had no more of the petal color yarn from Knit Picks. <laughs> I used them all up. Now the, the wood, the brown, for the um, trunk, I had plenty left over. Actually, I think I have some here. But um, yes, this is my cherry blossom tree. And it was from, this is what I had left. And it was from Knit Pick. And this is actually discontinued, these two colors. I think all of the colors she purchased from Knit Picks were discontinued to make sure nobody cheated and ran and bought more yarn. <laughs> you had to use what was given for your project. But I, I'm like head over heels with my beautiful fairy blossom tree. And the, this is all knitted. I knitted this and as I said, I wrapped the yarn around the branches. And then there's actually two different size cherry blossoms. I manipulated that pattern as well to make a smaller cherry blossom in the regular size cherry blossoms. And then they also had a pattern for the buds. And if you look carefully, you'll see some buds on there. Here's one right down there, right there. You'll see buds there throughout the tree. There's one here. So I spaced them out accordingly. And the whole time I was praying that I would not run out of this yarn because I wanted to make the tree as full as possible. And this is what I was able to do with 50 grams of this beautiful color called Petal that they've discontinued. And that was part of their um, palette, their fingering weight palette yarn. And, um, Any questions? No questions? Everyone's happy? Oh, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. 
Now I know I told you that this is all you think that this is all I do, but I, I wanted to show share with you a bag that I made a few years ago, a tote bag. I I, I wanted um I made this tote bag because most tote bags for knitters are all canvas or different materials, but none are knitted. And I said, I want a bag that's knitted to carry my stuff in. I've got all this yarn when I go out. So I found this beautiful pattern called Boho Stitch. It's a stitch sample, a Boho tote. And I decided to make my own tote bag. So to carry my knitted projects in. And uh, the only difference was I put a lining in it as well. But um, I didn't want a canvas bag. I really wanted a knitted bag. So there are, there are patterns out there for us ladies. I'm glad you like my ladies. I'm not glad you like my toys. I'm giving free shipping to Canada and the US. And of course you're getting the uh, pins. And the tote bags, and tote bags, not tote bags, project bags as well. Um, we are at the end of the show here, and I have to share with you a word. I was told that I must share with you this word. And the word is beauty. And that is for the uh, treasure hunt. Any questions? No? Oh, I'm so glad you guys love the show. I'm so glad you enjoyed watching me today. I, I, I truly enjoyed sharing all my beautiful gifts with you. Well, I've got so many things going through my head that I want to knit. You're, you're, how do I decide? I, well, I have a show, another show coming up. So I'm thinking of uh, creating a doll for that show. But other than that, there's whatever pops in my brain and there's a lot. Sometimes I have to write things down because I can't get to all the projects I want. Like I said, I even like to embroider and I have a embroidery kit in the drawer there for months now that I haven't touched. And uh, I would love to start working on that. But um, whatever, whatever pops in my head. And of course, when I get a custom order, I love custom orders because they're a challenge. I gotta create something for someone else, not for myself. And that is the fun part, the joy. I, I can't tell you how much joy I, I get out of making these toys and these dolls. I just, it just brings me joy. And I can't be in a happier place as a retired lady right now. Yes, it's fun and inspiring. You know, I'm thinking of it. I actually um, have purchased a book on how to embroider on, on uh, wool. Yes, how to embroider my knitting. So it's there, it's in my head. We have one more minute to go. Did I miss any questions, Sammy, or am I all caught up? All clear, great, great. Well, thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoy creating them. I, and I'm going to keep on creating my dolls. I'm not going to stop. I can't, I just can't. I just enjoyed it so much. Thank you for spending this hour with me.